IPA car carrier wagons are one of the rare double O gauge wagon types out there. So when you see someone like Revolution Trains delivering a new range of these models, it's definitely time to take a closer look. Hi, thanks for joining today's review. We'll kick off with an unboxing of a representative version of this new wagon type. We'll be looking at a covered version of the four car set, which is pretty well representative of the entire range. So we'll follow that up with the normal close-up views of that particular set. And then we'll get into a short running session, followed by our summary scoring and final recommendation. Okay, let's get underway. Okay, we're going to do the unboxing for these Revolution Trains IPA uh, car carriers. Uh, this is just, I just picked these up uh, just over the Christmas time uh, from Hattons. It was a pre order. And it comes as a box of four, and there's multiple options of these, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. Uh, so it comes in this nice uh, four car set. And uh, I suppose just a little bit of background uh, inside the box cover, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so we've got our four, um, four cars here, so let's just take this guy out. Uh, Revolution Trains usually do a pretty good job of their packaging. And here we've got the four cars here, so let's uh, take out one of these and start taking a look. This is my first um, ever IPA set, so I didn't pick up any of the others of previous releases from Backman, etc. So this is, is my first experience of these. And um, it's quite a nice effect there in terms of the that outer uh, rigging that's there. Uh, this is, feels quite solid. So there's a metal, there's a metal base in here. There's some plastic as well. Uh, but there's weight, so there's a reasonable level of weight. We will weigh these as usual. Uh, so these come as four or two bogey uh, four wheel four wheelers and they've got the car number underneath okay so that's interesting too so we can get them in in order um let's just see this guy at the end he doesn't move does he no he doesn't and i'm just looking down the base of it here whether there's anything to if you are going to install some model cars in here is there anything to kind of hold them in place and i can't really see anything i think you're going to have to uh Improvise for that, uh, which okay. Well, well, we'll take a look at that later on. I do want to put cars into this actually when I'm running it. Uh, so we've got a tension lock coupler here at the end, the kinematic coupler. Uh, some nice detail there underneath, picked out uh, pretty nicely. Uh, so the labeling and everything is very good. So everything here looks to a, looks to be to a pretty good standard. As you'd kind of expect, I guess, from Revolution Trains, uh, the text there looks pretty clear. And we again say we'll do our usual close-ups on this. And overall, it looks to have a good level of detail and kind of pretty well, kind of hits the mark, I would say. Um, okay, let's just take a quick look at the next car in the chain. So this one doesn't have a coupler attached. Okay, so there's no couplers here. So, and I do see up above here, let me just take a look on the bottom of the box. There's a small little kit uh, with, I guess, the, the, the couplers you would be using between them. Okay, so, uh, okay, so that's the kind of, kind of a drawbar type coupler, I guess, that you're going to put between the cars within the set. Uh, they give you four of them. Well, they give you, sorry, they give you uh, two sets of two. One is smaller than the other. That's pretty good. So those will those will run pretty closely. Again, same sort of configuration here. So we don't have a coupler on those. So between the two middle sets, and this one then does have an outer coupler. So it's got standard couplers on the outside, and then the inner inner cars will be connected uh, with these guys okay all right so 
this looks pretty good out of the box. Uh, these looks like we'll do a close up view of them now. And I'll incorporate these as part of a running session so we can actually see them on the track as well. Um, they seem to be pretty good from a, a resistance perspective, though again, we'll have to kind of see them when they're actually on a track, so to, to prove that out. But uh, this does look like a pretty good set. And um, I might buy a second one actually if, if, if this does check out pretty good. I might be buying a second one myself just to have a, a reasonable uh, train of these, uh, probably mixed with some other stock. Okay, let's go to the next part of the review. Okay, so let's get into the close-up view. So we're going to do a side-on view here. Uh, we're not going to go through the full two cars because it'd be just duplicating. So we're starting in the middle here so you can see the kind of connection in the middle. You've got one that the smaller drawbar is between the two there, as you can see. And there's kind of a stub buffer on either side. Um, there's no actual moving part to that buffer and you can see that little flap as well in the middle. So now we're going along the side, you can see that awning detail that's uh, kind of put in there. We've got some nice detail around the wheels on both sides. There's some nice underbody detail and some, some of it, uh, some pipe work. We saw that earlier in the outer box. Uh, nice labeling and uh, nice registration there. And overall a nice looking wagon. Uh, those buffers aren't sprung, so we see them here in the, in the 360 view. So we've got the two uh, sets here. So this is the quad set. So you've got the uh, standard tension lock couplers at either end of this. You've got the small um, drawbars between the individual pairs and then you've got a, a longer drawbar linking the two pairs together. So you effectively all four would be connected when they're on the track. Um, and you can see the long drawbar there at the actual end. So you get to see the far end here and, and also the roof, uh, the see-through roofs. And really I think the thing is that these do need a little bit of weathering that they kind of, if you see them in real life, um, they're, they're, they're always well weathered. So I think that's something they could do with. And I guess the other point I made earlier on in the unboxing was there really isn't anything to fix your cars when they're, they're loaded inside. So you're probably gonna have to use some double-sided sticky or something like that. To hold them in place and you fit around three cars per van. So I'll get into the running session. Uh, this is the running session I did with my second uh, class 92 from the Cure Scale. So it's a mixture of cargo wagons and the IPA wagons which are kind of in between here. You can see them there. Now the, these are some uh, Rocco cargo wagons at the front here. They're actually HO gauge believe it or not but they actually they look uh, don't look out of place in this particular train which is a credit to them uh, the other cargo wagons are Hellion so really I had no problems with this except for an instance when I was doing my high-speed testing and I was braking and I had the dynamic braking turned on on the class 92 and it did result in uh, some derailment for those IPA wagons and, and I really had to turn off the dynamic braking um, after that and when that was turned off and you got the normal more slower braking uh, there was no issues. Also when you run them on a radius 2 you do notice the, um, the, the the kind of increase in running resistance I would say and I would be a little bit concerned of running them at any great speed. I did run them on, the, on my radius 2 also but I didn't run them at speed so that's the only other thing. Um, they have a kind of a medium uh, running resistance in general. If you've ever had a four-wheel van, you'll know what I'm talking about in terms of how they run. Uh, they're not as smooth as uh, the bogey vans, that's for sure. And you just need that little extra bit of caution, particularly if you're going to start running them at speed. But really, they were fine here, and they ran up to the top speed. And I didn't have any issues uh, uh, apart from uh, that particular derailment. And, and as I say, on radius 2, they did get a bit tight. And I did have when I was pushing in reverse on the radius to one of my Hellion cargo wagons actually uh, derailed a little bit at the one just touching the IPA wagons. So not sure if there was some sort of interaction between the two from a coupler perspective or something like that. So we're going through the numbers here, uh, getting up to the top speed and, and they're absolutely fine and they look good and they look even a little bit better with a bit of weathering as I said. Uh, particularly with the cargo wagons here, the, the Hellion ones are weathered as well. So they have a, a quite a nice look to them as a result. And we're just going to bring this to the end now. And overall, 
I was quite pleased with them and they got a good run out here and putting them in the middle of a rake is good too because that gives them you know, there's a load on them they they were pulling quite a bit and that can have an effect in terms of how they run as well how the couplers operate how the, ten how the uh, dynamic coupling actually works etc so it was good to have them in the middle of a rake like this uh, a reasonably decent rake okay <laughs>
which I missed out on. And, uh, so I was happy to see this particular one. And you could be waiting again before you see these wagons. So I'm taking that into account. These are not, you know, more common wagon types that you might be able to purchase more frequently and at a, at a good price from a retail perspective. You're going to have to wait for these ones. People, when they get them, they tend to hang on to them and they're hard to get then second hand. So 8 out of 10, I think, is a reasonable score. Then when we start looking at the overall scores, we're looking at uh, an 8.6 uh, overall, uh, which is a good score, and an 8.8 .8, uh, when you take the price value out of account. So uh, they're very good scores for a freight wagon, and I think these are good quality wagons. And uh, certainly in keeping with the quality I've seen from Revolution trains before, now I did have a a more particular running issue with the last Revolution Trains wagons I was reviewing, which are their cargo wagons. Uh, there was a, a definite wobble issue on those wagons. It just doesn't have anything like that. They're good looking wagons. And I say my, my main thing would be, I would have liked maybe a weathered variant. That, that's probably the main ask I would have had uh, for this particular wagon. Otherwise, it is what it is. That's probably my only thing here, but this is a very high scoring wagon and uh, hence I think there's no no qualms about uh, uh, its overall uh, performance and quality. So let's get into the final recommendation then. So these are nice looking renditions of the real life wagons. Uh, they're produced to a high degree of quality uh, by Revolution Trains, uh, which is in, in line with what we've seen from them for other wagon types. The running performance is what you'd expect from a four-wheel on bogey van. So in general, I would tend to run these on slightly larger radius curves. Uh, not to say that they wouldn't run on a radius two or even maybe a radius one, uh, but the running resistance would be higher on those curves and I would be just a little bit more cautious running them at any sort of speed on, on the lower or narrower radii. That's the main thing on the, on the running performance. Uh, and it is, as I said, a, a medium resistance uh, wagon from a, a loading perspective. I do recommend it, so I think if you're a mod modern image modeler with your class 66s or class 92s, this is a wagon type you'll probably want to have in, in your set. So I certainly do recommend it if uh, if you are a modern image modeler, def definitely need to look at these. I think uh, they will allow you to create some pretty good representative trains. And there is um, uh, there's a very nice sheet, I'll put a link in the description, that is on the Revolution Trains webpage, which shows some of the different train configurations. It's, it doesn't cover them all, but it shows a lot of good typical configurations with the different locomotive types and the different wagon types and how they'd be made up in a particular train configuration. So check that out if you're interested in these wagons or if you have them already and you haven't, uh, haven't got that, then maybe I'll be good to take a look. I'll say I'll have the link to that in the description. So the other final point I'd make is that these wagons will sell out pretty quickly. So if you are interested in them, I would recommend you move on it pretty quickly. Don't be waiting for them to fall in price because they're not going to fall in price. You just need to buy them now from the retailers or you'll be paying a lot more on eBay at a later date. So they are recommended. And as I said, I think you need to move on them quickly if you're interested in them. That's really the end of my review today for these IPA car carriers from Revolution Trains. I think they're a very nice addition to the Revolution Trains catalogue. Unfortunately, they will sell out very quickly, so uh, they're not going to be around for too long. I think this is a good wagon type, and I would be interested in your feedback if you have these wagons. Uh, how are they run? F how have they run for you? Have you had uh, any good or bad experiences? Maybe just let us know in the comments uh, your thoughts on these particular wagons. I am recommending them. I think they're pretty good. So that's that's it. So thanks for joining today's review. Please smash a like on the video if you, if you found it of use. So hope to see you on the next one. And in the meantime, take care and happy modeling.